Thank you very much. Uh, all right, I'm super excited about this topic and we have a ton to cover, so I'm just gonna jump right into it and I already forgot um, my bag. So today, I'm gonna talk about running AI in JavaScript, specifically in the browser. And um, so I have five demos. This is not to go in depth into anything, but just to show you what you should research later and be excited about at a later time. So I'm gonna go ahead and start here. I have three bananas, one's perfect, one's too ripe, and one, or sorry, one's not ripe enough, and one is too ripe. Uh, I'm going to open up this website called Teachable Machine with Google.com. This is an AI in the browser website. You can see it has the TensorFlow icon here because underneath the hood it uses TensorFlow. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started by creating my own TensorFlow model. I'm gonna do an image project. I'm gonna do just a standard image project. And I'm gonna train on three different uh, types of bananas here. So too ripe and not ripe enough and perfect. Okay, cool. Oh, also, I am going to go offline. Uh, so I'm no longer contacting the server at all. Uh, everything is happening completely in my browser, okay? So I'm gonna start taking some pictures here of, let's see, too ripe, uh, of this banana here to give it some training content on what a too ripe banana looks like. So I'm gonna try to do my best just to kind of hold and record from various angles, try to get a, you know, a good variety of images there. All right, the next one's not ripe enough. And come here and show too green. This is a Costco banana, they're always too green. And then um, this is just the perfect banana. Uh, here we go, perfect, cool. So if I was doing a real model and I really cared, I would get a variety of bananas and things like that. But for today, this is great. So I'm gonna push the, the button for training. Uh, remember, this is happening in the browser, so we're training an AI model in the browser, and now it is running in the browser, so we get a preview of it. So we trained it, and we're running the AI in the browser. Now, it's seeing me, and I was in all three of these images, so it's really confused what's going on here, but if I hold up my green banana, uh, yeah, not ripe enough. It says, yep, pretty confident that's the not ripe enough banana. Let's go with the perfect banana. Uh, yep, depending on kind of the angle, the lighting in here isn't perfect, but Yep, it recognized the perfect banana, and then my uh, two right banana, it had no problem recognizing that at all. So um, this is pretty cool, right? Completely offline in the browser, AI running, AI being trained. So let me go back and take a step back. Uh, why would anybody want to do that, though? Why would you want to run AI in the browser? And I have a few reasons. One of them is client-side privacy. So I'm on a lot of calls with customers. They're very worried about their data being trained in some AI model, getting out into ChatGPT, and all of a sudden the whole world has their trade secrets, right? But what if you said, well, actually, you can just go ahead and keep your data in the browser. The AI gets shipped to your browser. You can go offline. We never see it. Um, everything happens on your computer. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, another reason is rich interactions. So imagine I'm filling out a form. Every keystroke that I make, I can run some sort of AI on it, and that would be really cool. And also, if I wanted to do anything in a web camera, my only option is really is to run it in the browser. It's not like I can send 24 frames per second to the server and have any sort of realistic response time that would provide any good experience with that. Another one is distributed computation. So running AI models for inference is expensive. You need to scale up a lot. Um, but if you could distribute that to your clients, they can handle it on their laptops. The laptop I'm running right here is medium-ish old. Uh, it's not the newest one. It handles these AI models great. And so a lot of your users could too. And accessibility, I mean two things by that, none of which Tyler Hawkins means. Uh, accessibility meaning that JavaScript, uh, the language is super accessible to us as developers. It's the most popular language in the world. Um, as well as if you get your AI into the browser, it's now accessible to the world. Um, so, uh, and by the way, everything I'm demoing today is free. Uh, don't have to pay a cent for it. These are open source models, and so you guys can use it too. So um, that's why I think you should do AI and JS. The rest of, the, of, of this is going to all be demos again. So let's go back to the banana example. Um, it was using TensorFlow. TensorFlow is a really popular library uh, made by Google long before large language models came in, ChatGPT and all those things. Um, this is like your state of the art, uh, the way that machine learning has been done. Uh, most people think that of uh, this library in Python, but it exists in JavaScript and underneath the hood, my understanding is they use the same underlying engine. Uh, 
Now, uh, there is one caveat. If you've made a Python model in the past and it's all perfect, uh, you, in order to make it work in the browser and, and, and Node.js, there is a transformation step. But you can take any model from any language, or sorry, from Python or JavaScript, and make it work and run in the browser or in uh, the backend for uh, Node.js if you want to do that. So um, there are so many demos that you can, if you demo, if you Google TensorFlow.js, you'll just see lists and lists of demos. Um, I think there's going to be some interesting things coming out with this. Uh, one of them is accessibility, like what Tyler was talking about, um, where this person's controlling the browser with his face because he doesn't have use of his arms. Or, or maybe you get, have kind of this augmented reality experience. Um, or maybe as I'm giving this talk, I just say the word next and it just goes for me rather than me having to push it. That's not happening, but um, that'd be cool. So that's TensorFlow.js. That's my first demo. We're going to move on. The second one is old school. This is old news. Uh, but in the browser, supported in our JavaScript web APIs, you can do text to speech and speech to text. Uh, that is AI. I know it seems like it's, it's been around for a while. It seems like that's just expected behavior. Um, but this is AI, uh, and you can totally do it. So let me show you an example here where um, I have this website here, and I'm going to say a color, uh, and it's going to turn the background that color. So let's just pick one here, fuchsia. Um, turquoise, salmon. OK, so this is just listening to my speech, converting it into text, and doing something programmatic with that, changing the background. Um, you can do the same thing by taking text back into speech. Um, and that is just available uh, in, it has good support across all the browsers, and you can use that um, today. So um, that is my second demo. My third demo is my favorite. So we're going to take a little bit of time on this. Um, Hugging Face is the hot uh, place right now for the AI community. It's where all the, the open source uh, language models like Llama, like Phi, like Mixtral and Mistral, all the, the really good open source models are being hosted. Um, Hugging Face offers a lot. They have two different libraries. One's Transformers, which is in Python. The other one's Transformers.js. Surprises in JavaScript. Um, and you know, these models, they're trained in various amounts of data with text or images or audio. They get trained into these foundation models. There's like a limited set of those. You can think of like the, the Claude and the Gemini and the ChatGBT. Uh, I mean, there's dozens of those, uh, but there's only dozens. Whereas once you start fine tuning and adapting them to specific tasks, you get into thousands and thousands and thousands of different models that have been made very good for those specific tasks. So um, Transformers.js allows us to access these tasks in this library. And you can see some of the things that you can do with Transformers.js. Uh, you can do things like summarization. You can translate. You can um, answer questions, classify text. It also works for vision and audio as well. Uh, and don't take my word for it. Let's go ahead and do it together. So I have here. Um, a plain vanilla HTML file, super vanilla, no uh, bundler, nothing being used, just straight up HTML. In fact, I'm going to open it like an HTML file too. Um, so just so you know, there's a, I'm trying to be super specific. There's no magic working here, and this is a very few lines of code. So um, this library, Transformers, is available on NPM, but because I'm not using a bundler, I'm just going to import it from an open CDN. Uh, you can host your own models that you have fine-tuned for your purpose. So something like Llama 3, I fine-tune it for this purpose. But we're not going to do that, so I'm just telling it only use the stuff straight from uh, Hugging Face. And I have a timer here to kind of time things. And then the rest of the code is commented out. I'm just going to run only a few examples due to time. Um, let's, let's open up this example. Let's pretend that we have made a to-do app, because that's cool to do. Uh, and we've made it AI, because that's also cool to do. And so the user is just typing away in natural language. that says, hello there. Please create a task called buy milk for me and put a due date of August 12th for it. Push Enter, and they expect it just to work. Well, for us to programmatically do something with that, we would need to find out some, uh, some questions. So I, I, the way this library works is I create a pipeline. I tell it what task I'm trying to accomplish. It has my first parameter, and my second parameter is optional. I can tell it what model to use. So in this case, I haven't uh, passed in a model, so it's just going to pick one. Uh, and I'm going to ask this model. I'm going to say, what is the name of the task the user want to create? And my second question here is, what is the due date? 
and I'm going to re uh, find out what the answer is and also how long it took. So now that I have uncommented this out and refreshed, um, we're going to see here, so that took uh, less than a second, eight tenths of a second, a half a second uh, if I rerun it again. So pretty fast, but let's make sure you got the answers right. So what was the name of the task? It was my first question, buy milk. And my second question is, what's the due date? August 12th. So the inference completely happened in the browser. Um, the, this model happens to be cached into the browser. So even if I went offline, it would still be available. Uh, it's just sitting over here in my cached storage. Um, I have lots of different models uh, for this particular file that I was playing around with, and it got the answers right in a super fast amount of time and completely free. Super cool, right? Um, so I'm going to comment this out and do another example. Let's go with um, this one just to show that you can show the text that is being inferred uh, by the model as it is being generated. So I'm doing a new pipeline called the text-to-text -text generation. You can think of this as your classic large language model, chat GPT, chat uh, back and forth type thing. And I passed it in a model uh, specifically this time. A, write me a rhyming love poem about cheese. I passed it some parameters just to show you it can be done. And this callback function is what allows me to stream the response uh, as it's being generated as well as how long it took. So now that I have this, let me refresh. Um, and it's going to load the model here. Now it is starting to generate the text. Cheese, oh cheese, you're the perfect snack for me. You're, actually, this sounds weird. Uh, reading it out loud, I'm not gonna do it anymore. Uh, but you can see it uh, generating it. And it took about 12 seconds um, to do the whole thing, which is uh, typical. Uh, um, or, or what I should say is, that's not terrible. That's what I should say. Uh, so 12 seconds, uh, I just let, there we go, um, to do that which is pretty cool. Um, let me comment that out, and let's do another example or two. Zero shot classification. So let's go back to our to-do app idea. Um, so the user typed in the same prompt, hello there, make me this task, but I need to know, wait, were they trying to edit a, a to-do item? Were they trying to delete one, create one? So I'm going to use this zero shot classification task. I'm passing it a model again that I care about, a small one. Um, and I'm going to say, hey, here's four labels that could be applied to this. Rank um, these labels with how you would, how they would apply to this particular text here. Okay, so I'm going to refresh. Um, ouch, that took 1.4 seconds. Still not terrible, right? Uh, we could live with that. Um, and it it orders them the labels in order of their relevance. And you can see here that it was 73% confident that this was a create task. Even though I never used the word create, I, I used the word make a task and all this stuff, it just inferred that this is a create um, operation with only 14% being edit and smaller and smaller. And so I could just pop off this array at the beginning and just know that, hey, what this user asked me to do is to create a task, so I'm going to go ahead and do it. Um, I think that this is extremely powerful and super cool. This is how. Uh, you can make an AI assistant for your application that runs completely in the browser. So this is the library Transformers JS. I wish I could go on and on about it, but I won't because that's just my third demo. All right. Let's go on to my fourth demo, which is LangChain. LangChain is a popular Python library. Lots of people like it. Uh, I'm not one of them, but um, this is just uh, these large language models. You hit them by way of a network request. Um, and you can do that directly, or you can use some sort of abstraction layer like LangChain that says, hey, I'll take care of it for you and provide you with some other cool things. So this particular one, I said, um, I did say everything was going to be in the browser. I lied. This one's going to be in Node.js, in fact, in TypeScript. But uh, you can see I'm just importing it in here, LangChain. Um, I come up with a system prompt. I'm trying to teach the large language model how to play 20 questions, uh, if you've ever played that game on a long car trip. Uh, I'm providing it with some memory stuff and blah, 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 blah. And then I'm going through a loop of 20 turns. And I, that was super brief. I'm just going to show you that it works, okay? So I'm going to uh, yarn start this thing. Um, I'm going to pick some object that I wanted to guess. So I'm going to pick banana uh, because um, that's what we're doing here today. So is it a living thing? No. So it's going to take that answer. It's going to be like, OK, I've eliminated like half of the things. Um, is it a man-made object? No. Uh, so I'm not actually going to play all 20 questions. All I wanted to do was show that LangChain is available in JavaScript too. And like all of these things that I'm demoing, it can be done in the browser or on the back end, um, however you please. 
So that is LangChain. Uh, the next thing that I wanted to uh, demo is I, I've now opened up a different browser. I've opened up Chrome Canary, the beta version of Chrome, uh, because Chrome, underneath the flag, uh, is starting to ship their own LAR language model embedded into the browser itself. So no network requests being made. The Google Gemini Nano lives in their browser. I can access it from a JavaScript web API, and it just works. So let me show you here, oops, too far back, um, this example. So I'm using, you can imagine this is like a window, right? But you don't have to type it. So um, I'm saying, hey, can it, Am I able to use the AI assistant here? If so, I'm going to create a session. I'm going to first ask it what is a cat. And then my next follow-up question I'm going to say is why would I want one? It knows what one means because this is part of the same session. So it assumes that I'm going to be talking about a cat. So I'm going to go ahead and push enter here. And the first, uh, well, both of them should be about cats. Um, and it worked pretty fast, uh, completely offline. This is super, super cool. And if that was too slow for you, uh, we could stream it as it's being uh, generated so that you can have that experience of uh, perceived uh, performance, right? Um, I think this is big for a few reasons. One is that uh, it shows this trend of moving JavaScript more to the front end and having this accessible to us as front end developers. Um, I, I, I imagine that other browsers will be super jealous and start to ship their own uh, large language models into the browser and that this will be a thing. So very excited about that. Um, and there are lots of other libraries that we haven't scratched the surface of, uh, all available in JavaScript. Uh, so part of what I'm trying to do, a heavy emphasis, if you think that, oh, I'm, I need to create an AI app, I have obviously got to do it in Python. Good news, you can still use a good programming language and develop AI, um, <laughs> which is really, really great news. Uh, and another thing, you know, and there's, there's, I mean, this is changing all the time, but there's, the future is coming. This is now a proposed spec to uh, allow your browser to access your computer's GPU. So you can start to infer things a little bit more. And again, I'm kind of showing this to show you the trend that I'm seeing, which is that things are becoming available for AI to run natively into the browser. So um, that was really, really fast. Uh, if that was too fast for you, I have a summary of this talk. Uh, that you can go and check out. And of course, I'd love to connect with you um, if you have any thoughts or applications for AI in the browser or in the Node.js backend. Thank you very much.